So as indicated, I am the regional administrator for the SBA, and I oversee a region that includes Illinois, Indiana, Wisconsin, Ohio, Michigan, and Minnesota. Now the SBA works to support small businesses. We have access to capital programs, free business counseling, mentorship programs, as well as certification programs to connect small businesses with government procurement. So we have a lot of small businesses in this audience, so I would urge you to go to sba.gov to see how we can assist you. I guarantee you that we can. Both USDA and SBA have extensive field staffs, and I can tell you that in the federal government, that's unusual. We also have complementary access to capital programs, and we have a shared goal to fill the gap to fill the gaps in underserved urban and rural communities. We work together to ensure that our entrepreneurs have what they need to grow their business. Our two agencies have collaborated in a number of ways over the years. We've signed multiple MOUs with different focuses, but I can tell you that the most effective and simplest collaboration that I've seen to date was when we cross-trained our field staffs on each other's capital programs so that we could leverage each other's staffs, our connections, and our strengths out in the field to do joint outreach, training, and advising. Another very important collaboration is the SBIR program. The SBA manages the Small Business Innovation Research Program, and through this program, the USDA issues sizable grants to support technological innovation and advancement in the field of agriculture. We value our collaboration with our USDA colleagues, and that's why I'm so excited to be here to introduce you to today's wonderful section of panelists. So, First, we have our moderator, Sarah Eckhaus. She currently serves as the Chief of Staff of the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Agricultural Marketing Services Area. AMS facilitates domestic and international marketing of agricultural products. They oversee 4,000 employees and a multi-billion dollar budget. That's at least twice the size of SBA. Sarah also worked in the um, marketing, regulatory affairs area of USDA, but between these two roles at USDA, Sarah served at the, in the White House uh, legislative affairs area. She's a graduate of Harvard University, and she's originally from Des Moines, Iowa, where her parents are sustainable producers of prosciutto. Sam Rickers, on the end, serves as the administrator for Rural Business Cooperative Services. Sam joined the USDA in 2014, after serving as the director of the Energy and Environment Team at the White House Office of Presidential Personnel. His background includes working as a litigator in New York and specializing in First Amendment law. He al his background also includes working as a community and political organizer, um, and while doing this, he served as a regional field director in Wisconsin for President Obama's 2012 reelect campaign. And he also served on the U.S. Peace Corps in Zambia. In the middle, we have Michael Alston, he served as the Associate Administrator of USDA Risk Management Agency since 2013. The RMA area of USDA provides economic protection and risk management tools for America's farmers and ranchers. Michael has served in a variety of positions within RMA spanning many years, and in that time he's gathered uh, valuable experience which has helped him in his current role. Previously, Michael served as the Deputy Administrator of the Insurance Service Division the Associate Deputy Administrator for Compliance. And prior to those roles, he was the RMA Regional Director over Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, and Ohio. So welcome to our panelists and to everyone else. Enjoy today's discussion. Uh, thanks so much for the introduction, Marianne. And thank you to Jim Slama and the entire Family Farm team uh, for putting together this conference and including USDA. Uh, we really value our partnerships, and we're proud to have, con um, have uh, been able to fund the Good Food Business Accelerator and some of your other farmer training and development activities. Um, I also want to thank and recognize uh, Secretary Vilsack. Um, it's always really inspirational to hear from him, um, and really his vision and leadership are the reason that we're here today and such a big part of this conversation. Um, under this administration, as he talked about, uh, we've made huge investments in local food and organic agriculture, uh, putting over $1 billion in efforts ranging from credit for local food farmers to over 900 local food infrastructure investments, um, all coordinated through the Know Your Farmer, Know Your Food initiative. Um, and the reason that's been possible is that we've made a concerted effort to implement policies that support good food entrepreneurs at every level in the food value chain from farm to table. 
So um, let's start at the producer level um, with Mike Alston uh, from the Risk Management Agency. Mike, can you tell us a little bit about the tools that RMA has to support farmers who are investing in sustainable, organic, or diversified operations? All right, thank you, Sarah. Um, I'll talk about two particular programs, uh, both that the Secretary talked about in his remarks. The first one is the Whole Farm Revenue Insurance. <clears throat> that insurance product is now available nationwide in every county. Uh, we really targeted small, diversified, organic producers in which you grow multiple commodities. If you grow multiple commodities, you will receive up to 80% subsidy on your premium. Uh, in other words, if your premium is a dollar, let's say, 80% of that will be subsidized by the RMA. So we believe that this is an avenue where we can ensure small, limited resource, multi-commodity multi producers out there. And we believe this is the answer to that gap that we understand that we are missing from conventional producers to those folks that are organic. The second issue I will talk about is our organic uh, insurance product. <clears throat> In 2011, we only insured four different commodities and offered organic prices for those four. In 2014, we have expanded that to 56 different crops that we offer uh, uh, organic prices. In addition, in 2014, we also announced that the contract price addendum, which means that for those organic producers, if you have a contract, your guarantee will be based off that contract price. Again, providing additional uh, risk mitigation to those producers uh, who are growing organic crops. We understand that organics is, is highly labor intensive. We also understand the price point for organic, so we're trying to meet uh, uh, a point that we can have folks uh, insure their crops. The final point I will talk about w with organics, it is very Im important that as more information, data is received, we're able to expand, uh, expand our program and expand those crops. So I, although I've, I'm making a plug for our sister agency, uh, NAS, when the surveys come out, please make sure you fill out the surveys because that helps us in developing our program for organic producers. With that, Sarah, I turn it back over to you. Thank you. And it's, it's really cool also to see how uh, different agencies across USDA, we work a lot with RMA, with our market news, our national organic program. Um, you know, there, there really is a, a strong relationship that we work together. Um, so now we're gonna shift a little bit to later steps in the supply chain, processing, aggregation, distribution. Uh, AMS, where I work, um, has funded a lot of local food efforts with our farmer's market promotion program and our local food promotion program, but there are a lot of other agencies that have really stepped up um, and implemented policies to make it easier for them to invest in these types of projects as well. And I think Sam can talk to us about how rural development is really um, taking a lead in advancing these priorities. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, rural Development's Rural Business Cooperative Service that I have the privilege of leading has a suite of programs uh, that help both develop entrepreneurs, open markets, and offer financing uh, for our rural uh, and urban producers that are really trying to add value to those products and open up the new markets. Uh, this is a bit of a preempt because next month, uh, the theme that we're gonna be really plugging at USDA is strengthening local markets for farmers and ranchers. And so tomorrow, I'll join uh, Wisconsin's state director visiting three local uh, and regional food producers in and around the Madison area where I'm, where I'm from. And uh, um, what's interesting is uh, there's a gentleman, Bill Warner, who is the owner of Snug Farm LLC. And I'll join him tomorrow. And he told me that I better be there by 2.30 p.m. because uh, while he received investments from us to put up solar panels, he's a high-tech, small CSA, uh, sweet spinach producer that, produ that uh, gets his products to Chicago, he doesn't have cable, and so he needs to get into the student union in Madison to catch the Sweet 16 game tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> so I'll be there tomorrow uh, and look at some of his investments uh, that he received through us, that he had to put up some of his own capital into solar panels. But we also have programs uh, like our value-added producer grant program that uh, the secretary mentioned we have our business and industry loan guarantee program, which creates that financing. What we know is that uh, 
when we came into this administration. In the first year, we had about uh, just $19 million, uh, and this is just from the Rural Business Cooperative uh, Service, $19 million that went in that fiscal year to local and regional food producers. Last year, 2015, we had uh, almost 89 million, so we more than quadrupled the amount of investment in one little shop in the USDA. And so the value-added producer grant has grants. Uh, I mean, most folks here, many folks know the program. It, is, uh, it has the planning and feasibility grants. And then after a producer has gone through that, there's, there are implementation grants up to $250,000. And then after you graduate, after you get bigger and stronger, uh, uh, there's financing options. There are programs to make capital cheaper for when you're growing your production. And, even, and that's the business industry loan guarantee program. And then the final point I'll make there is that program, because this is such a priority of the USDA, that program has a local food set aside. So it's a $1.5 billion financing program, but it has about $50 million this year that's set aside just for applications from local and regional food producers uh, in search of that capital. And if you're one of those producers or a business that's involved in that supply chain, and this is for the, uh, most folks think of the USDA and they think, you know what, if I'm in rural space, there's financing options, but this is a neat exception that Congress helped us put in, which is if you are a business that's connected to a uh, producer that's strengthening the rural, uh, um, regional, and local food system, urban businesses that are connected to that are also eligible for that financing. And if they're locating themselves in urban areas that are particularly low income or uh, food deserts, we'll uh, talk a lot about, then you're eligible for those financing uh, dollars at the rock bottom rates that we can offer. So. Uh, I know a lot of you uh, have taken advantage of the programs, or at least know them, and I encourage everyone uh, to look more deeply. Yeah. And again, I think this is where we see um, kind of a symbiotic relationship with our agencies. Um, some of the businesses that were funded through the Good uh, Food Business Accelerator program with uh, support from AMS actually have gone on to receive value-added producer grants. So again, it, you know, we're complementing each other and really uh, USDA, I think it just shows the full suite of services that we have. Um, and so before we close, I want to address another critical issue for entrepreneurs, which is uh, business planning. And uh, the secretary mentioned that uh, AMS today uh, is launching a new local food impact, uh, economic impact assessment toolkit um, that is available to measure and quantify the benefits of investments in local food. Um, it can help drive public policy, encourage greater investments in, uh, from communities and the private sector. Um, and at the individual level, it's also really a need for, there's a need for business planning assistance. I think that SBA has certainly a role in, um, but also USDA has tools that can help with that. So um, Mike and then Sam, if you can each speak a little bit about how your agencies are um, helping make sure that entrepreneurs are planning ahead for success. Well, thank you again, Sarah. I, Sam talked about going to Wisconsin to make sure the producer is able to see the Wisconsin in a sweet 16. That just another little uh, thousand stabs because um, <laughs> folks who know me know I'm a, a huge Michigan State fan and, and we all thought, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we also, risk management agency, and the secretary talked about this with our risk management education cooperative agreements. Uh, over the last 10 years, RMA has provided close to $125 million to small businesses, uh, 1890 colleges and universities, uh, CBAs that are uh, community-based organizations that are out there to help educate producers as far as one, mitigating their risk, if it's financial risk or human risk. I see a couple folks here I know have benefited from the RME grants. I see Barbara out there and I see some other folks. Even the uh, food families received benefits uh, funding a few years ago to help, help with the gap analysis and gap certification that RMA provided. So what we provide is avenues to educate 
producers regarding, one, either value-added benefits to their crops that they produce, two, to help them mitigate their risk that they may encounter. And, and we have seen, we have measured the metrics from folks who have actually participated in our programs to where, one, either they purchased insurance, or two, they have somehow mitigated their risk in one or two ways, either working with our sister agencies, either FSA or NRCS, or they have done some other avenues to mitigate their risk. So we're very pleased about this. I will also remind folks who are want to participate in our funding that April, around April 15th, you will see the announcement for 2016, uh, request for applications uh, for this year. We have a, close to $8 million that we'll be providing between our targeted states and our risk management education. So I remind folks to please look for that uh, RFA announcement so they can participate. And I look forward to working with folks in the future. Thank you. Uh, the importance of planning is not uh, just important for new and beginning farmers, but it certainly is important, particularly for those farmers and growers. In the 2014 Farm Bill, Congress directed uh, the USDA in the Value Added Producer Grant Program to make sure that it puts not only priority points, but set aside funding for new and beginning farmers and veteran farmers. So in a, the new regulation, this is boring government talk, but we mm -hmm. passed it last year, uh, those priority and set asides were included in the, new, in the current VAPG program. And so what that means is in last year, for instance, about, we had about a $34 million program with a 259 applications, 16 percent or more of those applications and, that were funded were of new and beginning farmers. And so we expect this year's Value Added Producer Grant Program, which will, the funding uh, uh, announcement will come out in about a week, will have even more funding and we expect and hope for that 16 percent to grow. There's a great example here in Illinois, uh, um, uh, Living Water Farms. And I, and I talked with Jim as I arrived this morning about that. I think they're either here, or they are certainly uh, a participant in the, uh, accelerator, in the accelerator program. A lot of our programs in rural business cooperative service, we work really through partners, whether they're lender partners or uh, nonprofit partners or local government partners. The value added producer grant program is one where we actually make grants directly in some uh, cases to the producer. And so what we see, however, is that partnerships are still really important. In the case of Living Water, they received a $57,000 feasibility grant through the value added last year. But it wasn't just that grant that's helping them move along. They're also, as I mentioned, uh, part of the, uh, of the accelerator program. And so the synergies of both the funding that's coming from the US, the technical assistance that's coming from uh, um, this organization is really, I think, what's moving the needle. Thank you. Um, and I do want to mention uh, our Farmers Market Promotion Program and Local Food Promotion Program uh, grant uh, request for application is currently open. And so certainly that's a, there's a total of about $26 million there uh, to support local food efforts and really encourage you to check those out. Um, we're going to close things out there. Um, I know there's a really full day of exciting panels and discussions. But I really want to emphasize in closing that we have just a tremendous amount of resources at USDA and across the federal government, to SBA, um, that are available to this community. And we're really looking for opportunities to do even more uh, to support local, sustainable, and organic farmers, ranchers, and entrepreneurs of all kinds. Um, as the Secretary mentioned, this uh, in the coming weeks, we'll be announcing some new tools and activities that are going to help uh, make connections throughout the supply chain and advance this work, so please stay tuned. And I would encourage you to stop by the AMS booth uh, during the show for more information. Um, and we really look forward to working with you. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>